All right. Uh, picked up this uh, on eBay, this U-Perfect portable monitor. I don't know. It says U-Perfect on the page. But so far when I see everybody unbox it, there's no mentioning of any company named U-Perfect. But I didn't see anything. Back doesn't say it. Uh, it's a 1080p IPS portable monitor. Uh, it's only $99. No built-in power or touch screen or anything like that. But yeah, it's a 15.6 inch portable monitor. Uh, comes with a screen protector. Um, so we're going to unbox this right here. Right here, right now. I'm going to unbox the accessories first. Um, yeah, this says something else on it. <laughs> Evisiviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviv
it does resemble what I saw in the description there. Um, we'll see about actually getting something like the switch to work here. Uh, there's this. Get that off. Oh, and this was delivered by FedEx. And uh, FedEx is good at, like, taking packages and throwing them around and breaking them and stuff. And I think they, like, chucked it up against my door. I, th I heard it hit the door. So hopefully it works. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, get... We got a battery pack here uh, for the Nintendo Switch. I believe you're going to need power. Okay. So I just recorded, or yesterday recorded, an atrocity of an unpolished video with total confusion. So now that I figured this out... I'm going to insert footage here. Uh, so, this is actually Dex running on the monitor. But I'm also using my phone to record Dex running on the monitor. So, while using Dex, I'm actually recording. This is not the best surface for the mouse. But, yeah. So now this is like an 89, I bought this for 89 cents, this mouse. I just threw this set up together with stuff I had around the house. So uh, there's the micro USB port on the side. That's for OTG. Um, the bottom is for video and data. And the top is for power, the USB-C ports. And of course, you have your uh, headphone jack, uh, mini display port, and HD, full-size HDMI here. And... Uh, so, there's also a VESA mount on the back. Did I say that right? It's VESA, VESA, I don't know. Um, so anyway, so here we have Dex um, running here. Um, actually, it runs better than my laptop. Um, so, I've been using that a lot. You can also edit 4K video using PowerDirector, and I think there are other ones out there. Uh you have Samsung's internet browser. Um, you can browse the internet using that. Um, so, yeah, this was uh, something that I watched. I think, yeah, I was uh, some watching some videos on the same stuff that I'm actually reviewing. Uh, so, yeah, you have, like, the desktop browser experience. There's also a, a browser called Desktop Browser, which you can use... And, uh, you know, I think you can fake different, um, different operating systems with that as well. So, but that's got a paid version and this doesn't, <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah, this is a little deck set up with a $99 monitor. I'm very surprised at the quality of the video or the, the screen because I was expecting a lot worse. Um, and if I could actually... <laughs> I'd like, you know what, I'm going to do a comparison later on using my laptop, which is running Linux, and this monitor, and I've already looked at them side by side, and it just makes, it's just, <laughs> there's no competition there. It just looks like crap, the um, laptop built-in monitor. It is a cheap laptop, so, but yeah. Um, so... We have Dex here, right? Also, it works with the Nintendo Switch. That was something in the last video I was doing I had trouble with for some reason. And then after recording the video, I just plugged it in and it worked. Uh, the only thing I found was that the YouTube app on the Switch, I get no audio with that. So I don't know if that's an HDCP issue or something, but there's no audio in the YouTube app. And I know the YouTube app on the Switch has HDCP protection. So, it may be an issue with the compatibility with HDCP, which also might actually cause issues with Netflix on some things. Uh, so, if you're looking to watch Netflix, you may want to be careful. I don't have Netflix, so I can't test it. Um, so, this looks really nice. I've been having a lot of fun with this. Uh, streaming games uh, with Shadow, uh, game streaming. Um, also tried out uh, I tried out Parsec to stream from my actual PC. Um, 
performance hasn't been great with par parsec for me recently it's gotten better but you know i was used to when i first downloaded parsec it worked perfectly but uh, we could show that with my computer and connect to the computer and now i have my desktop computer here and it has this issue where i can't drag the mouse like i can't I can, but I, I have to hit the left, I mean, at the, the right mouse button, and it does that, so it's weird. <laughs> but I can, nav you could do anything I could do on my desktop, uh, you know, bra uh, desktop uh, computer, including emulation and, you know, playing video games. Um, so there's that. And the latency for that is really low. So then we have Shadow. I don't want to sit there and try to connect. It's been very slow to connect recently. So, but eh, you know what? We'll do it. Shadow, um, connect to the desktop. Let's see if we can get there. But this is if you don't have like a Windows PC or if your Windows PC is garbage, you can connect to Shadow and uh, you can actually... Um, you can stream games. They do, There is a bit of latency on the Android side. I noticed it on Windows and Linux and things like that. If you can get it to run on Linux. Uh, it used to work for me on Linux and then it stopped. So, but, oh great, we're, we're updating. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, so in anyways, you can stream a fairly low latency Windows desktop and you can do things like edit videos in uh, DaVinci Resolve or whatever, 4K video and all that, for a monthly fee. Or you can, you know, play video games and whatever. But so far, this is looking like it's going to take way too long, and that's what I thought was going to happen. Let's see if I can... Okay. I'm just going to have to get rid of that. But yeah, it's, it's a thing. <laughs> it is a thing. So you have some games... That run here, you can play games like uh, Minecraft or whatever. But that's Dex, so you know Dex is Dex, and uh, yep. So now I'm gonna actually record some Nintendo Switch. So I'm gonna stop this video, and we're gonna hook up the Nintendo Switch. All right. Um, so now I got the Nintendo Switch and the Pro Controller over here. Hopefully I remembered everything. Um, and there's that. I believe you can also hook a keyboard up to this, like a wired keyboard, or one of those wireless ones with the dongle. But, so we plug the, the Switch in, and that really should be all we need to get going with the power of course you do need power with this um, I'm using a power bank but you'll need power from something that uh, screen is a bit too bright uh, see if I can lower the brightness here there's a button on the side um, come on Go away. Okay. There we go. Okay, so why am I raising the brightness? So if you press the one of the buttons, it brings up brightness. And you can lower and raise the brightness. But if you press the up, whatever the up button is, or whatever the plus button, it brings up the volume, and then you can change the volume. Um, is that low enough? I think so. Um, but yeah, the, so you can access the volume and the brightness. It's just, if you press up, it brings up the volume and then you can use the plus and minus buttons to raise and lower the volume. And if you press down, it brings up the brightness and you can use the plus and minus buttons to raise and lower the, the brightness. There's also a, um, uh, filter for uh, nighttime. I use that a lot because... I have trouble sleeping. But here we have the Nintendo Switch. I still feel like this is a little too bright. Too much contrast, something. Let me lower it a bit. 
So the top button is power, I think. And here we have brightness. Okay. I'm going to lower the brightness a little more. Hopefully I can... Eh, oh well, I don't know. I uh, can't get the screen to not be so blown out. But, whatever. Um, it doesn't look like that in person. Um, just on the camera. And uh, for all I know, it may not actually look like that in the video. I don't know. I, video doesn't always give me a proper preview. Even when I select the option to do so. That's weird. It... <laughs> okay. Now we have all our games here. We have Doom Eternal. Which released recently. At a hefty cost compared to the uh, nicer versions, nicer looking versions of the game. But it's portable, so that's my excuse, even though it's not a good one, maybe. I don't know. Yeesh. Oh, there's a video. This is completely unrelated. There's a video of this running. Like, somebody has a hack switch, and they're running this overclocked, and it has, like, uh, a higher resolution. It's According to him, it looks a lot like the Xbox uh, One and PS4 base console version of the game. He's even enabled uh, more graphic settings and such. And runs at a higher frame rate, I think, too. I don't know if it's 60 or what, but... That'd be cool if, uh, like, Nintendo could release just a console with, like, maybe more battery life and uh, better cooling. And then you could overclock it and just get better graphics that way. And then possibly DLSS. It'd be nice. But, I, you know, Nintendo's Nintendo, so... Stay Nintendo. Alright, so we're going to... I'm just going to show some gameplay of Doom. Um, not the sharpest game to, uh, to preview this monitor with, but I just wanted to show this. And then maybe something that runs at more of a native resolution. So you can see that. Come on. And we have gyro enabled for this. It'd be cool if it had mouse and keyboard support. Then you'd have like a almost like a portable desktop PC or something. So here we are. Latency feels all right. Speakers are meh, but they're you know it's, again it's an it's not even without tax it's not a hundred bucks. So you know, I was very surprised that the screen looked as good as it did for the price. And like I said, it looks better in person. I actually thought, I saw somebody saying that about another monitor, and I thought that was bullshit. I was like, yeah, right, you're just, you're just basically trying to hide it, you know, you're biased or something. I didn't say that, I just thought it, but now that I see these things in person, I'm like, oh yeah, actually, it looks way better on camera, I mean, in, in person than on camera. weird because some displays actually look better I hope I'm not too low I'm not really trying here <laughs> but yeah some displays actually look better on camera than in person this one looks better in person than on camera okay all right that's uh that's that uh, I'm just gonna back out of there but yeah, this adds, the camera it looks like it adds a bit of a, a glowy, or kind of glowing kind of look. But it also looks blown out too, and it doesn't look blown out in person. So, I don't know. I don't know if there's any way to get a more accurate representation of the, uh, of the screen here. But it does not really look that, uh, 
blown out in person. We got, uh, let's try some Spyro. I don't think this runs at the native resolution, but it looks really good. Um, yeah. So. See, like, right now it looks like the blacks are glowing really <laughs> kind of bright. But where I'm looking, it's very, uh, the blacks are very deep. And, um... They're not exactly OLED looking or anything like that, but uh, I'm surprised that they're as deep as they are with the technology they're using, especially for the price. So, yeah. So the main reason I actually even bought this was to take my Switch and throw it in my bed and have a bigger screen and get 1080p and all that. Because some games just, they don't really look that good on the screen in 720 Like Mortal Kombat looks worse on the, uh, the handheld than it does on a TV. Games like that. Some games are the other way around where they look better on the screen. Like Doom looks better on the screen than it does on a big screen or something. More than likely because it's running at the same resolution on both. And the responsiveness is very good. This touts, uh, not that, you know, like input lag wise, it's alright. Uh, but when it comes to the, also the screen refresh, what is it, the response time. They mentioned the response time as being, um, three milliseconds. There's an over. Uh, not overclock, there's a uh, overdrive feature, which I have enabled in the menu there. This looks really good. Um, I don't think this runs at 1080p, though. I don't know what the resolution of this is. I know it runs at 30 FPS. So 720 or 900p or something like that. But, yeah. If you're on top of the screen, though, it, you do notice some issues with the Switch, uh, with lower resolution games. Like, Doom looked a little blurry when I was right on top of it, but when you stand back a little bit, it's, uh, it looks a lot sharper. But, yeah. So you have that. And like, there's also different presets and things you can use. In fact, why don't I just go through the presets, even though the menu is a pain in the ass. And that's one of the things, the menu on this is a, is a pain in the rear end. Um, that's not the menu. This is the annoying menu. Okay, so we have... No, that's not what I want to do. See, this is the menu that is, annoys the crap out of me. Okay. So, let's see. So, there's that, which is a lot brighter. RTS. There's FPS. Text, which is really dark. Movie. Game, which normally looks... I guess it's trying to achieve lower input latency. So it looks a little crappy, whatever. And this is that DCR. I honestly don't know what that is. I'm probably stupid for not knowing. I'm probably an idiot. But here's DCR. I think that disables brightness and contrast, but I didn't really notice much except for it being darker and stuff. So actually it's brighter in this case because of the brightness that I had enabled. So, I gotta look that up to see what that even is. <laughs> I have the sharpness all the way up because the screen does have a bit of a blurry look to it. Um, so it's not super sharp or anything like that. But, now, let's go down. Well, let's try to go down and go up. And then end up going down because of it. Oh, the blue light filter's on. I don't know why the blue light filter's on. I turned it off. 
Okay. Um, turn the blue light filter off. Thought it looked a little like it also has apparently has free sync. It also says that it has HDR, but it doesn't. Um, HDR is a crappy effect that it puts on, and if you try to play HDR content with auto enabled, it doesn't really do anything. So, bless you, Spyro. Anyway, let's actually now do this without the uh, nighttime filter that I had on enabled, the blue light filter. And it'll look a lot better if I don't have that. It's just that at nighttime, it helps me sleep. Uh, yeah, I think that looks better on the camera. Maybe. <laughs> so, yep. There's Spyro the dragon. Like I already said, I think, and we already know this. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going to back out of here, and um, now we're going to do another game, because, um, wow, the screen is looking blown out, blown out, blown out. I will show you, actually, I'm going to show you YouTube not giving me any, um, not handing any, uh, uh, what is it? Not handing any, uh, that's not what I want. I don't want my videos. All right. So YouTube not handing any audio whatsoever. Already there's no audio in the, in the menus. Uh, let's play one of my videos that I recorded. And as you see, there's no audio. So. But when I back out of YouTube, there's audio. So, who knows? Okay. So, oh, I forgot this. I thought this was really cool. Um, so, this is one of the big things I was looking forward to. Was uh, the ability. Oh, I can't do it like that. <laughs> Let's this hey what just happened turn it back on there you go all right let's see if we're getting this correct um I wonder if i lay it down actually that would be cooler <laughs> to lay it down like this i'm not sure that that's going to get the correct uh we'll pull it off the uh pull it off the uh thing here and just lay it down like that uh, I'll see. Huh. Yeah, see, I guess that gives you a good idea of, of viewing angles and things like that. Um, but I'm going to prop it up so you can see it better. Let me see if I can use this to prop it up. Um, er. <laughs> Maybe I can prop it up. Using. Uh, so yeah, um, the idea here, <laughs> technically, is that I can take this and play something like pinball, and it gives me errors every time about the data, the save data. But uh, pinball effect supports, you know, uh, vertical screens, and I have it set up for that. I also have a uh, one of those. Uh, Grips, those pinball like grips. I kind of feel like I gotta somehow prop this up a little better for the camera. Let me use my battery, my giant battery pack here. Let's see if we can accomplish better. <laughs> okay, that looks better. Alright, so now, again, in person, this looks a lot better. Like, it seems like there's a, a bit of a glare, some kind of glowing look on the video preview, uh, but in person, the, everything looks amazing, <laughs> for, at least for the price, it's not, it's not OLED, but here we have Pinball running, and Pinball effects, 
have like a makeshift pinball table here. Virtual pinball table. I'd like to make a pinball controller. Some wood. A, I have some USB encoders left over and some buttons. I can make a pinball table that you can insert this thing into and uh, the switch and everything and then you have like a tabletop pinball machine. Hmm, you know what? Maybe I could get a little better image quality if I actually... Okay, I'm going to back out of that. And there's some other games on here that you can uh, play like that. Like vertical shoot -em ups shooters, whatever. Gunbird is one of them. Pull this back and get a little more of the screen there. Okay, uh, there's... No! There we go. I think that's it, right? Yeah. Alright. Are you happy? Are you happy? So yeah, yeah, this. <laughs> there we are. Okay. So there's the laptop. And we can... I'm going to go into the settings. And make sure that my keyboard is off. Okay, and here we are with that. Actually, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mirror the display and then I can show you what it looks like. I don't want you to play. It's very muddy looking. And the new display is insanely clear compared to that. This one looks all hazy and blue. And honestly, I mean, it looks like a slight better than it does. The volume. You know, this looks a little bit better in person than it does on camera again. But when you see the two together, that's basically the difference. Is that this one has this blue hazy look. It's very blurry. Um, whereas this one has a much clearer display and is a huge upgrade over what I have in here. And so this would make a great primary, um, that would make a great primary display uh, or upgrade to this. And let's see if we can actually just do something else here. So if I peel away this display, can I put this on top of the display that's in this be careful with it <laughs> it's not the best way to carry it or to grab it let's say I want to uh, have this on top no it won't it won't stay uh, it'll probably slide or knock this tab this thing over so I thought maybe that would be an idea but it's not anyways but as you can see this is a fairly big upgrade over the uh, built-in display on the tablet or the windows machine which is now running linux but yeah but my main reason for getting this was for the switch